this island boy is turning plastic into diesel and he says you can do it too is it true let's see guess who's back back again nature's back tell a friend guys you know what we're gonna be doing today we're gonna be reacting to this island boy this guy's an island boy because i'm an island boy well, in the description, it says Nicaragua. I don't think this is Nicaragua. This is somewhere else, but nonetheless, he's an island boy. And he is turning plastic into fuel. Once again, we're emphasizing that this technology is amazing. It can be done at many scales, and many people are already doing it. And all it takes is the right eyes and the right way to do it for this to change the world. So anyways, let's go ahead and watch this video. I arrived at this island about 25 years ago. When I first got here, there was almost no tourism industry and there were very few, there were very few people on the island. Life was a little bit more difficult. We didn't have any electricity. We didn't first have... of all, I love this guy already. Why? Because of his beard. What is that? That Jack Sparrow Loch Ness monster looking. No, I'm just playing. It's a cool beard. A beautiful island too. Any power tools. Just hammer and a machete. And we harvested our wild cane uh, to make walls. And we used coconut leaf to make the roofs. And then after three years, I met my wife, Anna, and we got together to continue putting this project of self-sustainability. The most successful steps in becoming energy self-sufficient was first getting the solar panels, and the latest is turning plastic into diesel which is a very easy process and just about anybody can do it. Here's what we're doing today. Yes, he's not wrong about that. The process is pretty simple. It's not all that difficult. This island boy is turning plastic into diesel and he says you can do it too. Is it true? Let's see. Today is we're going to make diesel from plastic, you know, common plastic that you have around your house. So it's very easy. All you have to do is uh, pack it into an oxygen free environment and cook it and So after this cook, this is uh, we made a little bit of a fire. It's only been going on for a few minutes. Yeah. Um, the hotter I do this and the longer, the more you make. So you know what? In little isolated communities like this, this type of pyrolysis I think is great. You know why? We're not even it's not even about like more energy out than the energy you put in at this point. At this point, it's a matter of getting rid of this plastic waste while also creating some type of product from it that actually serves you a purpose that you can use. So they're burning wood or maybe some coal or whatever under there. They pretty much have unlimited wood and, and coal and, or whatever they're using to start that fire, right? They're not gonna have to worry about running out of that anytime soon. They do have all this plastic all over their beautiful island thanks to us Americans sending our trash all over the world to everybody except for ourselves and they need to get rid of it they can't throw it away there's no landfill on an island so what can you do you either have to burn it and breathe in all that toxic crap or you can make fuel out of it so it's smart and you get that fuel and then you can run things off of it and this little bit is made this so far and this is probably like a diesel fraction because we took this out of the the first condenser so we can uh see if i have some matches here and we can put some down and see if it's flammable it's heavy, it's thick, you know. Okay, this fuel right here, this is uh, this is diesel. So I'll put this into my diesel generator so we can make electricity in our house for this evening and um, run the washing machine, the ice cream maker and everything that we want. And then afterwards, 
you take gasoline and that gasoline whoa that's pretty cool they're in this island they don't have electricity they have solar panels to bring electricity but that's about it but he's able to take plastic which is washing up on the shore make diesel out of it to run a diesel generator to then get electricity for his ice cream machine and his washer that is pretty cool if you ask me because they're in an isolated area that doesn't have electricity but he's being self-sufficient off of the plastic that is just washing up and being brought to him. These reactors do work on any type of biomass, but plastic and hydrocarbon based biomass like plastic and tires and such give you the best and most flammable fuels. I use my water pumps and uh, whatever else uh, I use gasoline for. So this is all from the trash, all from the plastic that washes up on the beach, all from the, uh, the plastic that is recycled, and that we just common plastic that you find underfoot is uh, actually good stuff that you can use. Making diesel from plastic helps provide the electrical needs of our house, business, and family, helps clean the environment, and also helps provide assistance to the local community. For instance, many people use coconuts to help them survive. They make coconut oil and with the diesel that we make from the plastic is used in the machine to help grind the coconut. So they take that home, make the oil with that, and afterwards they give me back the trash, which I feed to my chickens. As another step for self-sufficiency, we had to build our garden. To this taps into the circular economy right here. You know why? Because think about it, right? Now, Everything is within the system. It's a closed loop in this community now. The waste of the food goes to the chickens, and then the chickens create fertilizer, which they grow more food in, and now the plastic is becoming energy, which then allows them to use machines to make the food, which then, you know, it just ends up, it's, this technology is amazing, and it's beautiful because it can be done at these small scales like this too. You see, they're literally doing it. And... His diesel generator that we saw here is a really old one. Looks like it's from World War One or something. But, you know, especially older diesel engines would easily run this fuel. They can run off of motor oil and, and french fry oil. So, they can definitely run off of this plastic diesel. So, the rest of this was him talking about, you know, his aquaponics, the garden and all that. I love all that. I personally, I garden myself and all. The main catch was that... That, that he was making diesel from plastics, uh, gasoline from plastics. How did he build that machine? I don't know how he built it, especially if there was no electricity on this island before. You need a lot of electricity to weld, and he, he had to weld that stuff together. But the main takeaway from this is that, for one, this could be done on many scales. Big scale, small scale, but small scale is surprisingly effective. Now, if you do this at a small scale, you're never going to be getting efficiency. Like, you're never going to be getting a great output of energy relative to the input of energy you're putting in. Because the bigger it gets, the better. You know, we know this from when I had my Mark II reactor going to Mark III, Mark IV. It's just way better when you have more magnetrons, when you have things like agitation, when you can put more plastic in there at once. It's always better when it's bigger in terms of efficiency, but in terms of getting rid of plastic waste, I mean, come on. You're getting rid of plastic waste, creating a circular closed economy, and then it's not like plastic waste all over the place. Like, come on, and you're making fuel out of it. It's not like you're just like, just making it disappear. You're actually getting something valuable out of it for your time and for the energy that goes into collecting it and stuff. So to me, it's just an amazing system. And why is it not adopted at a large scale? I think it's personally, I personally think it's because money, you know, money is everything, right? And even if we did get this to a point where it is making vastly more energy output than the energy input, it still probably is more, you're going to make more money by just getting it from the ground, you know what I'm saying? And using the stuff, all, all these things that have already existed and what has been done for a long time now, that's still going to be more profitable. I mean, gasoline and diesel can last at least a few months. It's a battery at this point. We're turning plastic into a battery, essentially. So that's the biggest advantage. And of course, another advantage 
with that same thing being said is I can take this energy from this plastic and run my car off of it. You can't take the energy created from an incineration plant and run your car off of it unless it's electric. So that's another advantage too. I can run my car, my weed whacker, my generator, my heater off of this plastiline. So, and I can run it not only today, but I can run it tomorrow and for a month to come based on how much I have. So that's the biggest advantage to pyrolysis versus incineration. And then of course pyrolysis is more controlled as well, emissions and, and fuel content speaking. So there you go guys, you see it here. This process is amazing. Thank you for watching. Nature Jab out.